it's time to meet the other half or his better half, Vinuka Jagtiani. Vinuka, you were instrumental in starting Splash in 1993. So yes. what triggered you to start coming to the family business such a long time ago? At that time, we didn't really um, consider it the family business. It was the business which Mickey did. Right. And we moved from Bahrain to Dubai. I felt with my kids growing up at that time, I wanted to do something. And when I looked around, there was nothing really for young people at a good price. And that's really where Splash started off, seeing its young fashion at a very affordable price. And we started off in Sharjah as a first shop. So did you come up with the name Splash yourself, or who decided that name? I decided that name. Oh. By some people it was a great name, and by some it was a lousy name because it was all about water. Right, yeah. But I liked it. But yeah, it's, it saves a lot. <laughs> yes, I so think so. So what happened after that? You opened your first store in 93, and then what happened after that? How did you grow? We today have over 100 stores, so we've really grown. And for the first bit, I was very much a part of it in every way, from buying to putting the store together, every aspect of flat. There wasn't something I didn't do, whether it was from the warehousing yes. part to the buying. You were from the ground all the way up. From the ground up. all the way up. And I think that's how we've done it with each of our businesses, that we have approach of really being very hands-on and understanding the business. And the I think those were also kind days, that you know the market wasn't so competitive. Right. And we were very fortunate. We did well, so we moved on and grew from there, store by store. So what's your current role now? with the company with Landmark? I spent about 10, 11 years fully with Splash mm -hmm. and I moved on to actually set up a brand, the brand business, the franchise business for Landmark. And now I'm at the stage of actually coming out of that fully and now the vice chairman of the, the chairperson of the group mm -hmm. and um, playing a very different role. You have people with you for so many years who've been with Landmark for more than 15, 20 years for a long time. Yes. How, do you get a, how do you retain and keep these top people at your company? I think in that you have to really give Mickey credit that he was... Um, Mickey never wanted to run anything himself. He always believed that there were people who could do it better than him and he's, he's always worked as he set up every new business of having a key person who looks after that business and nurtures that business, who also has therefore an involvement and a share in that business. So we've always worked on what we call today our key man policy of nurturing and growing people within the business who are very much a part of that key business. Key man, you mean they get a share in the business so that they can think like an entrepreneur? Yes, so that's what right. Key man yeah. means. And I think therefore you get a lot of passion in the business and yeah. a lot of commitment. And it's amply obvious that Mickey has been hugely successful with his strategy. I was the first one who came out of as a partner with Mickey. He gave me an opportunity. He said, okay, let's open a new business where you will be a shareholder and run this independent business. And that's how the Shoe Mart started. And from one store, also Shoe Mart today has more than 100 stores in, in the GCC. That was his vision that he wanted to see his people moving forward become uh, an entrepreneur by itself. Now, what's the next big thing for you now that you're expanding your business so much? When I look back at life, I never thought I'd do so much. The amount I do today, I'm sure that I will just continue to, uh, to do more. And I'm not one who, who sits and says, OK, so do I really have to plan? I plan. But I really believe that challenges and opportunities, when you're very open to them, are there and they come your way. I'm sure you may have been through a couple of setbacks in your past where you learned something from it. Yes. Would you like to just share with us some setbacks you may have been through and what you learned from it? I've used every setback to kind of say a setback is actually to propel forward. And if I really had to look at one setback as such, there was a time where I did go through an illness and I looked at it and I, it actually taught me how to delegate. It taught me how to actually ensure that I had people in the business that if I wasn't there, the business was not going to suffer. It really helped take me to the next level. Renika, very often when people come to a certain stage in their life, for mm. instance, they've attained progress, success, whatever they've achieved, mm. 
but they may have sacrificed certain facets in the earlier years. In your case, have you sacrificed, made any sacrifices in the past to get where you are today? Okay, sacrifice is a word I, sh I don't believe in. I really don't believe it's about sacrifice. I think whichever way you people say they sacrifice, they actually often choose a way. And I think I'm very happy with what I've chosen. Yes, there may be things I would have loved to also do, but would I give up any of this for that? No, I would have liked to do more. There just aren't enough hours in the day. What does success mean to you? Success to me is first doing what you really enjoy and what you believe in. That's the starting point of success. Yes. Success is not just in business. Success is really across different you know, areas of life. And, and that's really what that's about. Yeah, correct. Well, how do you give back to society? The two initiatives, which I think one, um, my, the Beat Diabetes Initiative we started was my initiative. Uh, and it's really been quite amazing how, you know, the first year we did one city, mm. and then we've done seven cities in the second year with so many people and, you know, creating so much awareness. Amazing. I believe UAE is very highly susceptible to diabetes yes, too. It's it one is. of the highest in the world, yeah. isn't it? So it's the GCC, I mean, yeah. all of the GCC and India. And that's where we have yes. our businesses. So if it was the right one to focus on and build awareness for. Our other initiative is in India, where we're setting up in Bangalore a center for training for retail. Right. And starting off with that as building a hub and spoke model for getting people's, you know, school leavers ready for retail and employment. So hopefully that shall kick off very soon. Mickey's yes. ambition is to educate and put five million people into jobs. Five over million time. people. Five million people is what he would Great like to, to, have. to kind of educate and give skills to, to actually find yes. a job in retail or the services industry. Yes. Both uh, Renuka and Mickey uh, are my heroes in, in more than one way and uh, I owe a lot of whatever I am today to both of them. Mickey was always uh, the founder of the vision and Renuka was always the controller of the vision. Uh, and I think so when I look back at my life and I try to see what I have done for the people working in Splash, I, I probably give the entire credit to both of them. When I was young, I didn't want to get married because I said I'll go back to India try and do some social work for the country. I ventured into it. I said, okay, let's see what this is about. But I never planned to be in business, but then I never planned to learn German or teach German, so maybe I stumbled well into things.